Um, colleagues, um, I'm conscious of our time, so I will keep my uh, contribution short and to the point, uh, which is very unlike me, I may add. Um, however, I'd like to start by saying I'm actually delighted to have been asked to make the final contribution today. And that's not just for professional reasons as chair of EDAS, but also for personal reasons. Uh, I've worked in economic development now for 25 years, and I can honestly say I know no other economic development initiative or community development initiative that has touched so many of the communities in which I have lived and worked. Uh, I was born in Paisley. Paisley is now very much engaged with the bids process. I was brought up on the south side of Glasgow. Giffnock and Clarkston are very much reimagining themselves. I went to university in the west end of Glasgow. Byers Road and the wonderful lanes around Byers Road are now having a very successful bid. And I've also worked in economic development. I, for example, I was head of service at Argyll and Butte Council. And Dunoon and Oban have very much embraced bids. So I think that personal insight is an interesting observation about how bids in the space of a very, very short time, 10 years, has really mobilized the business community across Scotland. And I think one of the things that I think is very striking as, a, as an economic development professional is its success in different locations. Usually when you put down a plant, it's good in one soil. This has taken root in many communities urban, city centre, suburban, rural, and island. And I think um, somebody hit the nail on the head earlier when they said, bids is a vehicle for delivering local solutions to local problems. And that vehicle has been operating the breadth of Scotland from Kirkwall in the north, to Pennycook in the south, to Aberdeen in the east, to Largs in the west. So, I, I'm not going to be bashful. I am actually going to celebrate bids. But I think by celebrating, we also look to the future. And by, seeing, by understanding what's been successful, we can begin to plot a course for the next 10 years. So speaking personally, as a former head of service in economic development and transportation, I was quite involved in a number of bids. Three things strike me about bids that make them unique. And it's that uniqueness that we will retain through the next 10 years. And it's around the letter L. And it's legitimacy, leverage, and now in our 10th year, it's legacy. I, I've been fortunate enough to be involved in a num with a number of communities who have gone down the bids process, one of which was decided to actually not go that route. But that process has always been legitimate. It's brought together businesses, it's brought together residents, and it's brought together the local authority and agencies. And it's a very legitimate form of economic development. It is the furthest you can get from top-down prescriptive economic development. It's also about leverage. It's about bringing new monies to the table, but actually holding other partners to account. By bringing new monies to the table, you hold your partners to account. And I think it's about legacy. We've now been on this journey for 10 years achieved remarkable things in Scotland over 10 years. And I think it's about saying what's been successful and promoting that more widely. One of the things Ross uh, said earlier this, this morning, Ross Martin, is you know we have now have 34 bids in Scotland, engaging 11,000 businesses. Bids actually makes a contribution to the national economy of Scotland. And I think it's sometimes we, we miss that point when we look at our own local communities. Bids does co contribute to the government economic strategy. It is contributing to addressing issues such as social inclusion. It is addressing issues such as competitiveness and productivity. And it's that old saying, from small acorns, mighty oaks grow. And there are many, many successful saplings and trees now in regard to bids. It really is a great example of bottom-up, bespoke business and community development. So as I say, I'm not going to be bashful uh, using my uh, short period to actually celebrate bids and what you have achieved. Uh, I think we should actually just reflect on it. 34 bids, 11 of those have actually been had, undertaken successful renewal ballots. And we were hearing from Alex and Falkirk, they're going forward with their third ballot. 
Uh, in the US, we've heard that bids has been around for a, a number of decades, and yet we've achieved so much in one decade. Tina in Germany, Tina from Germany and Eva from Sweden were very much saying we were a role model. And I know that the economic development, local economic development models in those countries, and they are very impressive. And I think it's fair to say what you have achieved was not done in a time of unbridled economic optimism. You know, if you look at the last 10 years, nationally and internationally, it's been a very, very fragile period of fragile recovery. But I think what's been fantastic about bids as an economic development professional is you've reimagined your communities. Now, local authorities can come along and say, this community is this or this community is that, but you've actually allowed your communities to reimagine itself. As I said, I'm from the south side of Glasgow. Gifnuck has now branded itself a village. Now, there's a suburb, but I know what they're saying. People in Gifnuck have always thought they had something special but it's actually taken the community and the businesses in that community to say Gifnuck is a village, and it's been successful at that. We've also heard about how Aberdeen, on a much larger scale, is rebranding itself a retail and services and cultural centre. And as we heard earlier from Tom, Dunblane is rethinking the relationships between business, its community, and education. Before I, I look to the future, though, I do want to say I thought Eva from Sweden made a really insightful point. One of the great successes of bids is it's been achieved with a very tight and efficient central team. You know, I think it really is hats off to Ian and his team for allowing this process to emerge nationally over a 10-year period. And I, I, I think Ian was the right man for the job. Ian is always, from when I met him, I, struck me as a real sleeves rolled up kind of person. I, I didn't meet Ian for the first three months. I, I only spoke to him on a mobile phone when we were going through our bids process in Argyll. And uh, unfortunately, as you know, coverage, mobile coverage in uh, Argyll is very poor. I usually found Ian driving around the Inverurie area when I phoned you, or the northeast of Scotland, Aberdeenshire. So we had two sets of mobile phones with very poor signal. And five minute conversations would often take 20 minutes, 25 minutes phoning back each other. But what I was always impressed by was your willingness to engage and explain in very understandable, cogent uh, words how we could progress with bids in Argyll. And as I say, Oban and Danoon have been great, have been very much successes in that regard. So I, th I think we shouldn't forget that uh, Ian and his team have played a very important part over these last 10 years. However, enough of celebrating success. Let us look to the future. And I thought it was quite interesting that the, the, the title for my, 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 my closing contribution was Bids the Next Generation. And it, it struck me as very Star Trek, being something of a Trekkie. Uh, you know, Star Trek, the next generation, Bids the next generation. I thought it was funny, the read across with Leonard Nemo, and then we even had William Shatner in a clip. So there's definitely something Trekkie going on here. But I always, even as a kid, I loved that phrase, to go boldly, or boldly go rather. I'll split my infinitive, to, to boldly go. And I think actually bids over the last 10 years has went very boldly. But I think there's more to be done and there will be many more bold projects from the bid stable. So I think there will be more bids, but we will see more, a, a variation of bids, sectoral bids. I was very excited about what we were hearing about tourism bids and John's examples from the US. Food and drink bids, fantastic. Uh, I'm gonna put out a personal appeal for a whiskey bid at this uh, juncture, so please, any thoughts, come forward. We've heard about canal bids. I think there'll be more business park bids, and I would have liked to have heard more about business park and commercial park opportunities with bids today, and I think that's something we should actually major on in the future, and I think there will be more cross-local authority bids. But that's the success to date. That is the future, or some of the themes of the future, but I think we all have to recognize the bids will always have some challenges and significant challenges. So as we celebrate, let us not forget that challenges do lie ahead in the next 10 years. I'm never, uh, I'm always somewhat surprised at the apathy that can occur within a business community. There can often be a sense of things being taken for granted. You know, people honestly don't understand the effort and the commitment by a few in the bids process to, make, to keep the show on the road. So I always think that getting over that uh, 
attitude of taking things for granted will be a challenge for bids. And I also thought it was interesting that we were talking about Aberdeen and its challenge of engaging businesses with, uh, with the bid area. And I think that resonates with many of us. So those are some of the, the, the sort of administrative and governance issues that will always be with bids. But I'm confident they can be managed and overcome as we have done in the last 10 years. But there are meta challenges out there. And I think that's something we have to be alive to and perhaps collectively consider. Uh, we heard uh, from uh, Tina uh, in Germany who said digital, online shopping, the digital interface with our communities is just fundamental. It's accelerating and I think it's something which we have to grasp with. And I've seen how it's fundamentally changed rural communities and rural villages and rural towns and the same is happening on the high street in the city centre. Demography is another issue which we must be alive to, the ageing of the population and the economy. We have to be alive to the fact that we are embedded in something of a, a slowly recovering economy. However, these are the challenges, but I do actually go back to those three L's. You know, legitimacy it is an incredible concept, bringing the business community together, and it provides legitimacy to the economic development process, which many projects and initiatives do not have. You are unique. It's about leverage, it's about finding new income sources, and I, I, I thought uh, the examples from America were interesting uh, and thought-provoking, uh, perhaps worth greater consideration of some of the things that we could learn, even though the institutional uh, structures are very different. And my final point is legacy. There's been some great stories today. Uh, I've really enjoyed listening to them, but we have to become more forceful and eloquent in not telling our individual stories, but telling our collective stories. And I thought uh, Tom made a, a, a good point about us perhaps becoming more persuasive in regard to government. And I think that's about us collectively aggregating all the things we're doing locally and making a pitch about how these bids areas are changing the face of Scotland's high street, its villages and its towns. It will always be about local solutions to local problems. And I love, I've always loved the expression, let a thousand flowers bloom. And that's what BIDS is about. It's about finding local solutions to local problems. So I think we have to say to the, to the government and to the media and to our communities that we've actually now have a very exciting garden. We have allowed many flowers to bloom across Scotland and we have to tell these stories more forcefully and eloquently in the coming months and years. One of the things I think we touched on today, but we only touched on, was the rethinking of the state, the rethinking of government, both nationally and locally. And there will be big decisions to be taken by the Scottish government and by local authorities. Well, they're already taking them, but they, this will be a constant over the next 10 years. How do we deliver services and assets? And I actually think bids and this model of legitimacy and leverage actually has a, has a role to play in how we rethink how we deliver services in our local communities. But that's for another time, but it's something that we have to think of. And I also was very encouraged to hear the, 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 the recognition that as we invest in infrastructure, whether it be rail, roads, whether it be digital infrastructure, we have to consult with our communities. That is key to successful economic development. So to summarize, there are no silver bullets in business and community development, but I have to say the bids process gets pretty close to emulating that. In the next 10 years, I'm sure bids projects will continue to go on creating better businesses, better communities, better places, and delivering better services. The model will keep evolving, but so will we and so will our businesses and so will our communities. So I'm going to leave it there. I, I'm going to say thank you uh, for listening and thank you for uh, your, the questions that are coming. And once again, happy birthday, bids. And uh, I'm looking forward to getting involved with that whiskey bids scheme. So please approach at the end if you're up for it. Okay, thank you. Thank you.